Alright, back with another video, and essentially I want to talk about my Goodwill bins trip and a few other things I've been doing, you know, uh, the rest of the weekend here. Sometimes it's not about the, the great quantity of things you find, but what you find. And what was interesting is that I, you know, couldn't find very much in the uh, merchandise, and so I went over to the books. And the books provided me with a uh, one book that I really, really am excited to add to my collection. There's another book that I'm going to add to my collection, but we'll see uh, which uh, copy I decide to keep. But this one, you know, I found several other books by the same author. Unfortunately, one I already had, and it was not in very good condition. The other one I didn't have, but it was also not in good condition, but it took some water damage, and it was a little too gross for me to keep. Um, at 49 cents, I probably should have grabbed it and see if I could have improved the cover, but then the pages were still would have been, and I would have, you know, worried about that, you know, uh, wrecking the quality of my collection. So I'll still be on the hunt for that one. So let's just show you what I got in. And so I spent, I think, $1.65 at the bins, which is very, very little. And one of the very first things that I found was this Ho-Oh um, uh, full um, art uh, Pokemon card. And really did not realize that there's a crease right down the center of that, but it cost barely a cent. So I think that would be cool uh, just put in, in one of those. Uh, here, well, we're going to do this. I had another one here I was going to use, but I guess we'll just use this one right here. And this Pokemon card here, we'll just throw it in this gaming sleeve here. And should be just fine otherwise. So that's really kind of cool, and I can enjoy that. This is about a $7 card, I want to say, online. There's not a ton of copies of this one uh, for sale. There are very few of them when I looked up this particular card here. I think only six or seven copies. There's tons of this character, tons of full art ones, but not very many of this one for sale. So that's kind of fun to have. Um, found this thing in the books and I got it for weight here because it's a little pamphlet brochure. It just says, come see our cool Japan. So that's kind of neat. Um, and then it says, goodwill ambassador for the visit Japan campaign in the U.S. Uh, Yokoso Japan. Something to do with uh, Fluffy Ami... something. Uh, Ami Yumi on Cartoon Network in the corner there. I don't know what that is, so... Who knows? And then there's the same type of brochure it was on the inside of this kind of a nifty little folder here. So I could use that to put whatever else I want in there. There was a ton of Japanese brochures there. No idea, but it was there and it didn't cost very much. I figured I'll put that with my Japanese collection. I'm a little on the tall side there, so hopefully it won't stick too far out of the binder. Um, so there is that one there. Um, we got this thing here. I don't know anything about it. I think it might be an ashtray or some sort of coaster here. Um, but it was one of the last things that was in a kind of one of the better bins, and it was the last thing that no one could get to, or what, they passed over it. This 1960 Squaw Valley Olympics tray thing here. So I don't know what that is, but kind of unusual. I cleaned up some crud on there. It looks like I maybe can clean some more off of there. These are just some uh, bad spots in the in the copper plating, so those will always be there but just kind of an unusual deal there and I was able to figure out it was from Squaw Valley it's been kind of scratched off there from being you know rubbed on something somebody probably used this as their change tray you know threw all their loose change in there and that might be taking account of some of the damage on there I don't really know about that one there I grabbed a few other things here I don't really have very many of them or what I did with all of that stuff there um, but I'll show you the books that I got here, and so the books essentially were a dollar, and the rest of it was 60-odd cents there. Um, like I said, it was not a day for finding a lot of stuff, and um, but unfortunately, at the same time, it was uh, low on customers due to the um, the time change. So we uh, this is the second book I found, but we love you, Charlie Brown. I found two Charlie Brown books here, but the other one was just too disgusting to, or just too beat up to grab. I did not have that one. I already have this one, but this was in such really good condition, I thought this could be an upgrade, and it probably is. I have a, a person in mind, people in mind, for the secondary book there. I'm collecting all my duplicate Charlie Brown Peanuts books. You just don't see these very much at all, because there are super collectors of variant collectors and edition collectors of these books here. And also these are the things that people put on eBay because if you look at this book here, um, oops, is that, oh, I thought that was damaged there and it wasn't. Um, you want to look at the inside here. When you look at the title page here, um, it says 57, 58, 59, um, published simultaneously. 
Um, so I don't know exactly what edition that is, but a lot of these editions uh, stop with a date of the 1950s and everybody's like, wow, I found a book from the 50s. And a lot of times, no, you didn't. A lot of people just do not know. Uh, this is a one time a dollar. This is not a rare book at all. I bet you I could go to Abe Books and start finding all the kind of books that I want for next to nothing, but I don't want to start doing that. This one here is the book that I really, really wanted, and I said it killed me to throw back the other two books. But I found a book by Donald J. Sobel that I did not have. Encyclopedia Brown tracks them down, and I'll go into this book in just a second here. But I just found a little bit more information. I'm currently watching this video here. Um, this actually happens to be the eBay listing for Encyclopedia Brown tracks them down. And if you've seen my previous videos here, I am kind of a, a photograph collector. So I want certain covers, you know, this sort of thing. This is an unacceptable cover to me. This is book number eight. I'm about halfway through the books of different varying or varieties and quality and quantity. And the thing is, is that what's really maddening is that all these covers are different and not every series got the all these art to them. I think this one may have right here. But most of the books never got finished, so it was just random books that got republished with different art. And you can't find a full set of all the exact same art. So you just can't complete an entire run of that. It would be like the Hardy Boys. And so there are the later, you know, the 70s, 80s and the 90s, they changed up the artwork after, you know, 100 years. And some of those uh, different artwork variations are very, very difficult to track down. Um, you know, but this book, I think, first came out in 1971 or something to that effect. So you're going to find very, very different editions of the artwork most of the time inside the book. They've only been done twice um, uh, by two different, you know, two or three different people. And I've gotten some of the people to... Um, um, get autographs. I do have some of these books with uh, book plate autographs because I don't want to send my precious books here. Now here's the one that I just picked up for 50 cents, a 1982 paperback. and pretty sure it's very close to 1982. This one, uh, however, I need to figure out something else about them. Uh, this one is really blurry picture. Uh, got some stains on the front of it. Um, Oh, that's somebody's finger there. Well, we don't need that. We don't need the finger. I don't mean gifted the finger. But yeah, somebody does not know how to take photographs. They're all blurry. Oh my gosh. that Maybe that's done on purpose. I don't know. But it looks like somebody... Oh my gosh. Dirty fingernails. You don't need that in your eBay listings. All those pictures just to sell, sell a book for $6 free shipping, that's pretty bad. Um, there's This is actually in much better condition than this book here. Um, but one of the things I wanted to mention here is the, the picture variants, and sometimes it's just really hard to find what you're looking for. This one here is a variant because it says, Watch Encyclopedia Brown on HBO. That is crazy. I've never heard of that. I did not know that existed. So that's one thing that I'm going to be looking for. Watch Encyclopedia Brown on HBO if you can see that there. It's right there in the corner there. I'd never seen that. And that sold me on the book, regardless of what condition it was, because, uh, you know, if I decided to, I could always rip the cover off and, and um, you know, toss the book if it was too disgusting there. But what I wanted to show here is I found a video here on the history of Encyclopedia Brown, the iconic children's book series. Uh, four months ago, mind you, four months ago, 60,000 views. That's how popular this book series was when for kids. You know, all the way from from like the 1960s on up to like uh, the present, you know, every story he starts off the same, you know, talking about his dad and his mom sitting at the dinner table discussing a case and Encyclopedia Brown goes out to solve his own uh, little deal there and he solves his father's uh, case in just a few seconds or whatever. But I just think it's really cool. And I'm just writing here, these books are not very easy to find in good used condition. I'm trying to collect them all with some cover art variants, and some are just impossible to find. Mr. Sobel even autographed several of my books. Well, he um, essentially autographed uh, some stickers, and I pasted them in the books. Uh, that being said, there go back to the, the eBay listings here. This is a photograph of the exact book here. But nine times out of ten, it's not. It's just some sort of generic image there. Here's another one, tracks them down. So this is like an earlier edition here. There's a 1981 edition. So I could be looking for like seven or eight different editions of the exact same book there if I wanted all the different artwork variants. I'm not looking for that. I'm just looking for mostly ones that I probably would have had when I was a kid. Um, and there's only about five of those. And there's no checklist trying to figure out how many artworks. I, I did verify from one author that 
or one artist that he only did like five or six total, so he didn't do the entire run, which is I don't understand why some books got attention and others didn't. I guess maybe they were just, whenever they were down on inventory maybe or something like that, and they just felt like one had to be, or maybe whenever the lease was up, you know, that sort of thing, they just did a new book there. So if you're a book collector, and this is again another problem I, I run myself into, I'm collecting everything that looks like easy on the surface to collect, and then it's mega hard to do. Like I said, when I go to like Abe Books, or there's another one, um, A Libris, those are the two sites that I use for used books. If you know any other ones that are pretty good, I might check those out here. But nowhere in the 71 book listings here on eBay have I found this one with the HBO logo in the corner there. That is very unusual to me. I've not seen that before. Um, there might actually be some other ones that say watch Encyclopedia Brown on HBO. Do not know. So let me know if you know anything about that. And I'm back on track with uh, my Scout Patch collection, so look for a few of those in the future. I'm researching a bunch of them, making sure, of course, I don't buy any duplicates. And it was, like I said, a very very um, fun trip because I found something that has been on my wish list for a super long time and I spent only a dollar sixty five doing it and thank you for watching. We'll return after these messages. Did you know that there are at least 23 million American adults who can't read a one ad? Or a book, or a job application. That's why we have RIF. RIF is Reading is Fundamental. It's a national nonprofit program that makes kids really want to read, with thousands of local community projects that help kids help themselves to books. Books we can pick for ourselves and keep for our own. Books that help young people think and learn and grow. Because when you get a kid to open a book, you get him to open his mind and his future. You give him a chance to get somewhere in this world. But RIF works only if grown-ups make it work. That's why RIF needs you. Give a kid a book and you'll give a kid a break. Join the RIF program in your community. For more information, get in touch with your local RIF program. Or write RIF, Box 23444, Washington, D.C. Hey, you're pretty smart. How'd you get so smart? Reading.